Labs two amp theta. And here I have a black diamond amp. I actually built this amp about 10 years ago. It came back for repair because the 6BQ5 melted down. So I talked to the guy and we decided to upgrade it with a 6V6. So watch the video and you'll see how to do it yourself. Hope you enjoy it. Here she is, the D-Lab Black Diamond Rack Mount Style Amp. I believe I built this about 10 years ago. It was built on a Rocktron Hush Unit chassis. So one time this thing was a solid state little gizmo and now, or I should say then, I converted it into a tube amp. So here's the rectifier tube, 6X4. Then I had an OD3 regulator tube which regulated the power to the preamp tube. And the output tube was a 6BQ5. This is an ultra linear output transformer. Here's the back side of the unit. Speaker output which was 8 ohm and a hum balance control. There's that output transformer, filter cap, power transformers right here with a fuse. Since this was built on a hush chassis, that's why the controls have this strange arrangement that they do. And this amp also has my clipper, which I haven't done in years. It actually pops some diodes on your output tube and gives you kind of a cool square wave output. And it was variable. Here's a side shot of the chassis. And this is how the hush unit was originally made. It had a U-shaped shell that went completely around. There was no access. And the old circus board that used to be in there was supported by the knobs. So the board was kind of just sitting in there horizontal with some standoffs. Obviously to convert it to a tube amp I needed some access. So I milled this opening. It was quite the job. I had it uh, clamped down, had the cabinet together and milled away and then when I was done I added this nice perforated metal bottom and there's some feet too. But this amp is going to change a little bit because I discovered that 6BQ5s are not a reliable output tube especially for class A. They like to smoke and when they do they do this. See that resistor? Cook City. Had to open up that resistor when the tube shorted shut the amp down. So we're going to convert this amp. What's a conversion you ask? We're going to pull out the 6BQ5 output socket, install an octal socket for 6V6. That'll still work with the output transformer. Everything else in the amp besides a few resistors will remain stock. So underside here we are again. This is where the 6X4 is. The one that was in the amp originally fried, it shorted when all of this took place. So I have replaced that and I checked the high voltage, it's good, filaments are good, etc. So the next task will be, go down here, I'm going to dig out this 9 pin socket that was for the 6BQ5, open that up and install the octal. Since I have no intention of keeping this 9 pin socket, I am simply going to go in here, clip these leads, leave myself a little road map, yank the socket, clean things up. It should go back together pretty quick. So as you can see, all the leads are free. Now I'm going to go topside, drill out these rivets and get that socket out of my way. So I find the best way to remove these rivets is with a center drill. You gotta go down in the core and then knock the head right off the rivet. Looks like a charm. Next step, I've gotta take this three quarter inch hole to an inch hole for the new socket. Now you can drill that out if you have a big old stepper bit. But in this case, I've got a green leaf punch. So there's the punch. I pretty much just center it up. And we're gonna flip it. Go top side here, grab the wrench, start cranking her, and then I'm going to have a one inch hole. So there's the new socket in the hole, 
I'm going to have to punch some new holes because the old ones on the 9 pin socket don't line up. So this is kind of the position I want it in. Get these punched and drilled. So you can see it's actually probably going to be easier to wire because I got these nice big terminals and I have some grounds available now. So I deliberately roughed up the metal right here. I'm going to lay a bead of solder because I want to rely on this tube socket to give me those ground points. I've got everything out of the way, so now is a good time to get that unger in there, solder up that ground. So here's tube lineup, 6x4, OD3, 12AX7, and now a 6V6. Next step, let's wire it up. Very nice ground connection provided by the unger. Now we'll start connecting up the wiring, and let's start with the filaments and we'll go around from there. The new 6V6 socket has been successfully installed. Now, we have to go over here to the power supply, get rid of old Smokey the resistor, and then this was the original bias resistor for the 6BQ5, which is going to be way too small of a value for the 6V6, so we're going to pull that too. So for the bias check, I installed a 470 ohm which is kind of the textbook 6V6 resistor. Plug her in. Watch the current here. Hopefully it's somewhere around 35 to 40 mils. There she is. Right in the ballpark. So the amp's alive. Let's put it on the scope, see what it looks like. Here we go, maiden voyage. Power's on. Should see the OD3 come to life here in a second. There she comes. She's powered up. Got the Heathkit audio generator, inducing about a 1K tone. Here's the scope. Current gain up. Looks like I need to bring that down a little bit. There's a nice breakup. Bring the gain back, volume up. Looks like it's doing the job. Here's a tone. So there you have it. A successful retrofit. Of course, as we know, the 6V6 is a famous tube for Class A applications, such as a Fender Champ. So hopefully the Black Diamond app will live on for another 10 years, and hopefully I'll be here if it needs to be repaired again.